Hey, and welcome back to another video here on uh, True North Horse Trap. Um, we haven't been able to upload in a while, and that's just because of scheduling. Um, but luckily, we were able to get out into the woods today. And uh, we have a different uh, subject we're going to talk about, and that is firearms out in the woods. Um, today, I have a flintlock with me. That's what I brought. And uh, I'm going to hopefully make the case on why I think this is one of the best bushcraft firearms you can take out with you. Um, this is a Traditions uh, Hawken rifle. It's uh, a reproduction of the old uh, Hawken design. Um, it's a classic. Uh, one of the last flintlocks really to be mass produced, um, at least mass produced in the uh, 1800s sense. Um, really popular with uh, cowboys and uh, mountain men because of the barrel. Uh, it's pretty short, for, especially for a black powder firearm. This is a really short gun. Um, it's about the size of uh, a regular rifle. Uh, maybe just a tad bit longer, but realistically, it's it's a very similar size. Um, this shoots a 50 caliber round ball. Um, realistically, we're talking 49 caliber um, because we have a patch, and that makes up for the uh, other little bit in the caliber um, of the firearm to make 50. Uh, so you get a nice airtight seal. Uh, flintlocks shoot two types of powder for the most part. Like there's, uh, depending on the gun we're talking about, could be the same powder, but. Uh, this firearm shoots uh, 2F black powder. I'm using Pyrodex. Uh, so Pyrodex uh, doesn't use 2F, 3F, whatever. They'll have uh, little letters. This is RS, um, but it says the FFG equivalent, which is 2F. Um, and then for priming powder, I have Goax black powder uh, and 4F. Um, these things take a while to load, um, so there's a downside to them, but the upside to them is that they are very easy to fix. Very easy to maintain. There's a, a very small amount of moving parts on here. Uh, so it's a lot more reliable than, say, a, a semi-automatic firearm because there's a lot more things that can go wrong. Um, here there's really just the moving parts are the hammer or the cock, the triggers, and uh, this uh, frizzin, I think you call it. Um, sights on here are uh, just the standard, uh, I think they're called semi-buckhorn sights or just buckhorn sights. Uh, just the regular sights that you might find on a uh, lever action or something. Uh, but the gun itself is really easy to take apart, really easy to clean, really easy to maintain, uh, but also really easy to shoot. Uh, it's not very loud. Like, I'm not wearing heating protection. I recommend that you do, but uh, it's not loud like a different kind of firearm. Like, say, a shotgun is pretty loud. Uh, rifles are pretty loud. Um, but this isn't that loud. It's not an ear-piercing kind of loud. It's just loud. Um, on top of that, the recoil isn't much at all. Um, Keeping in mind, this is a 50 caliber rifle. Um, you know, you say, oh, I shot a 50 cal. Like, that's a lot of recoil you think about. But realistically, it's more like a gentle push than a, like the recoil off of a firearm uh, that shoots smokeless powder. That's uh, a lot more violent. Um, like I was showing the ammunition it shoots, uh, I'm shooting round ball, uh, like what they used to use. Uh, but nowadays, you can buy uh, conical bullets uh, to put in these guns if you're going to really hunt with them. Um, this isn't for me a hunting gun at all. Like I just kind of take this out for fun. That's why I bought it. Um, but I could see myself hunting with this. We do have a uh, black powder season coming up here in Ontario. I think it's about a week, two weeks. Um, just actually a little bit to hunt with the gun. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, load this up, show you guys how to load a black powder firearm. I just shot it, so I'm gonna go ahead and run a patch through it and clean it. Um, cool thing about these patches that I'm using, um, they're just Thompson Center patches. Uh, they're called pasteurized cleaning patches. There's a hundred in a container and they're for 45 to 58 caliber, uh, which is what I'm shooting. I'm shooting a 50 cal. Um, so it works in my gun. Um, the cool thing about these patches is that you can use them to shoot, but then you can also use them to clean. Um, at least that's what I've heard. Um, and that's what I've been doing and it works pretty well. Um, so this today is actually the first time I've really taken this gun out. Uh, so before today, it was very clean, and I maybe shot five times before I started the video. Just get a feel for it. I'll run a patch through it, and I'll show you how dirty it got. And I've been running a patch through it um, every shot, because I want to keep this thing pretty clean. Look how dirty that is. That patch was blue before I started, and now it's black. Um, so I'm going to run the other side of the patch, the clean side. Clean it out the other way. I'm going to run it twice. This also helps lubricate the gun, um, so it makes it easier to clean, but also um, the projectile goes a lot easier 
uh, out the barrel uh, as well. Um, I'm wearing gloves to load this with. So I'll take that tag off. Uh, but I'm wearing gloves to load this with because black powder um, gets pretty messy. Uh, it smells um, kind of like eggs, uh, and I don't really care for the smell. <laughs> I don't think many people do. Um, I'm just wearing just shooting gloves for this. Um, just keep my hands clean, get a better grip on the ramrod. Um, so I forgot to bring a powder horn with me, so I'm just loading it straight out of the box. You should never do that. It's very dangerous, but I want to shoot, so got to make sacrifices, I guess. <laughs> so um, I'm shooting 100 grains. Um, I don't know exactly how much these weigh. It doesn't say um, on here at all, but uh, they're Hornady um, 50 cal muzzle loader round bolt. Um, I don't know how much they weigh, but I am getting a decent amount of kick out of it. It's pretty accurate with 100 grains. I'm just shooting at 75 yards, pretty close, um, just to get a feel for the gun, really, before I take it out. Our gun season starts next week, so uh, for deer. So I'm just getting ready to take this thing out and hopefully get something. Um, and then after our gun season, we have muzzleloader season. Um, it's a muzzleloader and a bow season. Um, so I also brought the bow with me just to try that out. And we're going to talk about bows too, in terms of bushcraft. All right. So we got that, uh, loaded up with hundred grains. And uh, so basically I'm just going to take my rifle and pour that down the barrel. Now, uh, I give it a, a couple of taps. It's a, it's a little overkill, but I just want to make sure that when I take this out, there's no more powder in here. Shake it around, make sure all that powder's down the barrel. Open that up. Yeah, we're empty. Um, so next I'm going to grab a patch. And uh, I did this earlier. I had to use a ball puller. Um, these patches stick together because they're, uh, they got like lubricant on them. So um, you want to make sure that uh, you're uh, putting one patch in or otherwise it... Uh, you're gonna have a hard time and you're gonna wonder why. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that off. You should be using a ball starter, but uh, I don't have one. Um, I find that the ramrod works all right. It's uh, it's tough to start it out. See, so you gotta hit it a little bit and then we gotta separate um, this part from the ball. Sometimes it likes to get stuck. So uh, sometimes you grab it like that pull if not i'll grab like a i've just been using a screwdriver tap it a little bit try to free it because when we get to the bottom we got to take this out and then drop it uh, to make sure that this is in fact at the bottom there we go uh, so now we just take it go like that and then we're at the bottom right now so you give it a couple taps you don't want to go too much and then you throw it like that and uh, right now we're not now we're at the bottom see how that's bouncing that means we're all the way at the bottom, ready to shoot. I take this little uh, ball starter and patch uh, attachment off my ramrod, uh, just so it stays clean when I'm shooting. Uh, so that's it loaded, um, but it's not ready to shoot yet. We gotta put primer in there. Uh, so we're at half cock, which is like the safety for this gun. Um, let's tighten that flint. This is 4F. I'm just putting enough to uh, get a little bit of a flame going. So I'm just filling up the divot in there. I'm not packing it down or anything. Let's get rid of that excess. Now I'll close the frizzing and uh, say I'm hunting or whatnot, I'll just walk around like that. Won't go off. Say I see something, all I got to do is just bring it to full cock. And uh, this is pretty cool. It has a set trigger and a regular trigger. Uh, set trigger makes the trigger feel like a hair trigger. Otherwise, the trigger pull can be quite heavy. Um, take aim, set my trigger, and fire. A lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. Um, so that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm, I'm still kind of new to black powder, so it takes me a lot longer to load. Um, but I've seen people on YouTube and whatnot shooting these pretty quick. Um, Especially if like a powder horn or something, this thing can be pretty easy to shoot. Um, it's just because I forgot to bring one, it takes that much longer. Because I got to take it straight out of the here and I got to be pretty careful. Um, but other than that, that's shooting a uh, flintlock. It's pretty easy, like I was saying. So what are the benefits 
uh, of shooting a flintlock? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, it's a reliable firearm. Uh, it's 50 caliber, so you can you can kill pretty much anything with it uh, for food. You can shoot bear. You can shoot deer. Um, if you're a good shot, I guess you could shoot at uh, rabbits. They make headshots and whatnot. Um, you get some rabbit meat and whatnot. And the uh, cool thing about flintlock, too, is you can fine-tune what you're loading. Uh, this is a rifled barrel, so you don't really want to do it, but you could shoot shot out of here, uh, especially if it's like a soft lead. Shouldn't be that much of a problem. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Um, so you got, I guess, like a close-range shotgun. Um, then on top of that, uh, especially in Canada, flintlock rifles, no matter when they were made, are considered antique. So you don't have to worry about firearms licensing or anything. Um, so as long as you store it according to the firearm laws, it's it's legal. Uh, so you don't need a gun license for it. And that's a good benefit uh, to people who can't get a firearms license. But on top of that, it's a benefit because uh, you have to renew your gun license and you get that six month amnesty period where it's like still effective, but you can't shoot anything. You just can have your guns in your house and it's OK. Um, during that amnesty period, you can still use flintlocks. Um, so if your amnesty period falls during hunting season, you still have something to hunt with other than a bow if you don't like bow hunting. Uh, so it's nice that way. Um, and there's one more thing. Um, I talk a lot about, uh, especially in the last video we uploaded, I'm pretty sure I talked about having things that can start fires. The cool thing about this is it's a flintlock. That means that it pretty much runs like flint and steel. Um, so really I can just put a piece of char cloth, for example, into my frizzin, close that up, and all I do is just pull the trigger, and now I've ignited my char cloth. It's pretty cool. Um, and then on top of that, I guess if you're having trouble starting the fire, you can use priming powder, uh, because this doesn't really explode, it just kind of burns, um, which is why you don't get much recoil with this gun. Um, but yeah, so you have a reliable gun and a fire starter in one piece, and I think that's a pretty good um little thing to have with you out into the woods um on top of that these guns are really easy to repair to take it apart there's literally just one pin that's it um you just pull that pin out and then the barrel comes off and then you have two pieces you got your stock and your barrel that's it um so you could fashion a stock out of a piece of wood in the like out here if you broke your stock or something um as long as you just cut out a piece for the actual firing mechanism as long as it fits in, it works. Uh, so that's another benefit to a flintlock. Um, over other rifles, you have to carve out intricate parts for regular rifles, whereas this, you just, one piece of wood, it doesn't even have to look like a stock as long as you can shoot it. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so that's another benefit. Um, a lot of people will say, like, you only get one shot. So, like, what if you're defending yourself, you know, against a bear or whatnot? that's different if you're in bear country you shouldn't be carrying around one shot um, out here like the worst it ever gets is maybe a bear that you've pissed off a little bit and you can you know bear spray usually takes care of the black bears around here um and then on top of that this thing could be pretty loud so the noise will scare it away on its own um so yeah there's it, it if you live in an area where you're gonna need more than one shot obviously this isn't a good gun um but in terms of one gun to carry out with you, at least in this area, it's a pretty good gun. Um, you can hunt bear with it. You can hunt moose with it. You can hunt deer with it. Elk, um, where you can hunt elk here, at least here in Ontario, if you're lucky enough to get a tag. It's a pretty versatile gun. Um, so that's the flintlock for you. And hopefully uh, within this uh, little short video, I've been able to make a case, um, you know, about why these are pretty good to carry out in the woods. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this was a quick video, um, but I figured we haven't uploaded in a while, so um, I was out here shooting, so I figured why not make a video and uh, post it. Um, so yeah, hope you, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be uploading pretty soon, um, end of the deer season. Uh, just a couple of deer hunting videos we'll post. Um, bear season's in too, so maybe we'll go for a bear hunt. That ends, uh, I think, in November, so that's coming up soon. That's only a couple of uh, days away, actually. Um, I think it's the, uh, what, 29th today. So, yeah, bear season uh, ends in a month. Uh, so we'll probably do a couple of those, and then small game ends in December. So um, stay tuned for uh, future videos. Uh, probably be uploading one next week. So hope you all enjoyed it. See ya.